So good morning, everyone. Yeah, today we are going to start our our class for this yeah ITER lecture, nano bio part. So first, we are talking about some mechanical property. So maybe some of them you already know about the, some mechanical property, how to measure, and what is the meaning. So maybe this can be some little bit upgrade your knowledge. That's what I hope. So this is our general plan about uh, our in integrate integrated lecture in iTrend. So this is about biology part. So among them, maybe Professor Junin Lee and Jung Eun Hyun will present about this yellow highlighted part for maybe they will start this bio lecture yeah, from the end of June. So before that, we are going to more focus about the mechanical or nanobio, nanobiomaterial part first. And then this is our nanobio part. So like this, we have very huge amount of lecture series. So maybe among them, maybe you are you here at the moment, just few parts. And then so totally, our total lecture consists of six semesters. So six semester of the biology and the sixth semester of the uh, some mechanical or some material part. So uh, anyhow, we want to combine them together very concisely and integratedly so maybe you can enlarge your knowledge. So yeah, so this is our this semester schedule. So we just, we try to, you understand about the, what is the mechanical property and then how you measure the surface property. So this is our things to present in this semester. So first five or six lecture will be done by me and then other lecture will be done by best. And then this is about the biology. So biology part will start from the end of the, this, this month. So Junie Lee about some apoptosis to hypoxia and then Jung Eun Hyung will present about some nucle uh, nuclear exit biology, including some how you extract the DNA and then until chip and CRE LASP analysis. Okay, and then this um, make, um, material part will start from the 7 a.m. every Tuesday. So maybe after four, among four or five, five or six weeks, I will present every 7 a.m. Tuesday. And then, of course, yeah, after lecture, you will have to do some exam. So, for example, we are going to do two exams, so midterm and final. So our value is quite high. Uh, among 100, you should score 90. So, uh, so when you get a score, 90, midterm and final, as a first time, this is a pass of, of the qualifying exam. Okay. So for your graduation as a PhD, you should pass uh, maybe six qualifying exams. So this is among the one. But for example, if you fail to meet them, yeah, your score, for example, 85, which means fail. And then in a final, you will do both exams together, meet them and final things. And then if you do pass in meet them and final fail, and then we will give you one more time chance to pass it and then finally you pass it this is passed but if you fail certain every two single part you failed it and then this is a fail okay so which means that midterm final we will give you two chances to pass but either of you you fail it you fail this qualifying exam and then maybe uh, you will do another chance to get another qualifying exam about another subject. Okay. And this is the whole picture of our IT lecture series. So if you have any further question, just after class, let me know. So today uh, we are focusing about this few topics about stress strain curve and then how you measure the strength, strength and test method, the what is the meaning of the cleave and fatigue, and then hardness and physical elasticity. So first, uh, maybe you guys already know about these things. 
So for example, this is some rubber, rubber remover. And then if you make some tension, tension means you can enlarge this length. This is called tension force. And then if you compress using your finger, which is called compression. And then shear means that, for example, this is your some sticker. So if you stick your sticker to the wall, and then you try to remove that sticker using this force, this is the meaning of the shear. So what is the difference between tension, compression, and shear? Tension and compression, when you look at it, this force direction and then this uh, their affected area is perpendicular. But in shear meaning, shear force is like this, and then the interface is parallel. So this is the this the exact meaning. What is the shear and the other compression and tension? So one more time, tension and compression, a uh, force direction is force direction, and then affected plane is perpendicular. But in case of shear, they are parallel. Okay. So in this way, this is also called shear because this is the affected plane, affected surface, or this is your force direction. This is also parallel. So which is called this is a shear stress. Okay. So in paper they mention about maybe they want to do some tension study or compression study or shear study. You have to think about the meaning of this one. Oh uh, yeah. So for your enlarge your knowledge, maybe I can do some more YouTube video. So you imagine what is the this what is the this methodology? Tension, compression, and shear. Okay, what is this? Tension. Okay, good job. Oh. They already mentioned. So this is called compression. Okay. And then Products through an array of tests that have up two test specimens overlapped by a specified area. Them together. The assembly is secured in a mechanical properties tester and is pulled in shear until failure. Like this. We record the load at breakpoint and calculate the corresponding shear stress. This is important because if a material fails at lower strengths, it may not be suitable for some applications. Here we illustrate one of the many advantages to using adhesives over mechanical fasteners. Rather than directing the load at a point, so let's imagine you over. stitch these two tape together and then you pull out this way. This is called shear. Because if you think that this material is uh, like rubber, rubber remover, and then if you force in the, this, this way, this is called tension. But even though you, you pull out these two material, but your uh, interest of the plane is here, the stitch plane, which is called shear. Okay, so you have to always think about the direction of the force, and then uh, what is the plane? They are perpendicular to your direction or parallel to your direction. Okay, let's move it to our topic. So, yeah, for checking the mechanical property of your certain material, yeah, you need this kind of Instrument machine, okay. This is called instrument machine. Actually, instrument is some company name, but this most well-known company for doing this kind of mechanical property. So we just say instrument, or just mechanical universal testing machine is almost same meaning. So in the instrument, 
uh, they are they are structured like this is called load cell. Load cell. The meaning of load cell means that they measure the force. Okay, and then this machine. Can you see this back part? Back part. They move. So instrument machine consists of this load cell and the movement. Only they have two parts. So they never move this bottom part. They always move this upper load cell and then this moving instrument. So from this load cell, they can measure the force. Okay. So in reality, you can see the load which are applied for this uh, rubber band. And then you can also know how much they are enlarged as a, as a millimeter or meter. This is called length. So only way they measure, uh, they can uptake from this instrument only length and then force. Okay? From the length and force, you can calculate many things. So this is the original uh, formula, how they measure. So yeah, I will show you about the detail. What is the meaning of the tensile strain or tensile stress? So anyhow, you just think about this is a force, and this is a length. So they, over time, they measure the length, and then at the same time, they also measure the force. Okay, this is the way how you do. And then, uh, when you do some, uh, this is this assay, you can go down this road cell or go up. Okay. So this is uh, for measuring the tensile force of this rubber band. Definitely, this load cell should go up. So, so this is called uh, tensile strength. But in case if you want to measure some strength of a pumpkin, you have to go down this load cell. Okay. So this is called compression test. Okay. So important thing is that the load cell only they can go go up or go down. They never can go left and right. Yeah, they can go up, go down. And then sometimes, so how we measure the shear or bonding test? So for example, this is your bracket on your tooth, or your tooth, for example. And this is your braces. And then I want to measure the bonding strength of this bracket or your, your uh, tooth. And then uh, for shear stress, you just pull down this one to the instrument load cell, okay? And then from this uh, mechanical force from top to bottom, and then this bottom force, they can uh, break down this bonding area. So this is the way how we measure the shear or bonding test. And then we have to think about what is the unit when you measure the stress strain things. So first, always the machine measure the force as you know, force that can be yeah, expressed like one kilogram per F or 9.8 Newton. Okay. So this is a force, and then but we always think about the uh, strength. Strength is a little bit different from the force because strength they can contain the meaning of the pressure, and then which means that as you know, pressure they can in, they can include some area. So, for example, if we want to say the strength, you need force and then area. Okay? So, for example, if you apply the same force, but the material has some different area, and that which can give you different pressure. Okay? So, that is why the strength is the meaning of the pressure, so they have to, you have to consider the area and force together. So, definitely, this force should be divided by area and then it, which can be converted to, to the uh, strength, the unit megapascal. So megapascal is also another uh, unit of the pressure. So simply, uh, Newton, uh, let's say, Newton per millimeter square, which is converted to the megapascal. So this, this, you should memory this one, okay? Newton or kilogram per F, per millimeter square is megapascal, okay? So for example, you apply 10 Newton to one millimeter square, which is converted to the 10 megapascal, okay? So let's say your membrane has some 10 megapascal compared 
uh, compressive strength, which means that the one millimeter of the membrane, one millimeter square membrane, they can resist 10 newton. This is the meaning. Okay. What is the meaning of 10 newton? 10 newton is uh, one kilogram approximately. So one kilogram, even you apply one kilogram to the one millimeter square of the area, they can maintain, they can maintain their structure. This is the meaning of the megapascal. Okay. Okay, so this is a question. So we want to break this dental bracket to your zirconia, and then we bond it together, and then we apply the force from the top part. And then the maximum force to break the bonding is 120 Newton. And then the total bonding area is rectangularly this one. And then what is the maximum bonding strength of this uh, this bracket to the zirconia as a megapascal. How we have to do? Amar, what is the answer? Maximum force, 120 Newton. And the area is like this. What is the bonding strength? How about you? Okay. 120 Newton. And area is, what is this? 30 millimeter square. And then the number is 4, right? And then unit is mega pascal. Okay. This is the answer. Okay. So next, so and then the other way is that you already know about the stress. Stress is um, strength, okay? Stress and strength is same meaning, and they always consider the pressure, and they already consider the total area and the total force, okay? You have to always think about that. And then what is the meaning of the strain? Strain is uh, some kind of ratio of the length, how you uh, change the length or how you change the, their some some things so uh, when you think about the strain so strain is some um, for example um, before that yeah let's talk about this one so strain means that the strain the unit they don't have any unit because strength always used original your length and then how you change the length so for example if your uh, membrane length is 10 millimeter like this let's imagine okay and then you change the, their length after tensile st strength you change to 12 millimeter okay so you can, so why is the strain? So the original length is 10, okay? And then how you change it? 12 minus 10, okay? And then two. So there's why the strain is 0.2, okay? And then how about when you apply the force in other way, like this? So let's say your original length is 10, okay? But the final length can be 8. And then where is the strain? So the bottom part, original length is 10. So how much they change? 2, right? And then strain is 0.2. So depending on your force direction, force direction, this tangent mode also, when you think about the strain 0.2, so I can make this kind of exam. Uh, our original length is 10, and then during the compression, during the tangent mode, uh, the strain can be 0.2. And then what is the total length of the, this membrane? And then you can calculate 10 plus 2 and 12. But how about in the same manner, the strain is 0.2, but original length is 10, but during the compression mode, 
what is the final length? So 10 is the original, and then you have to minus 2, and then that can be 8. Okay? So depending on the mode, you can think about in two direction way. So this is the meaning of the strain. Okay? And then, uh, as you can see, let's say this is a 10 millimeter, and then this is a 10 millimeter, 2 millimeter. So this unit can be removed, right? So that is why the strain, there is no unit, okay? Okay, so, so this is the meaning of strain. And then uh, we have some, uh, some important issue about this uh, Poisson ratio. What is the meaning of the Poisson ratio? So for example, if you uh, apply the tensional force to the rubber remover, a rubber eraser, for example, you can uh, make it enlarged, right? But during that time, also, there, during this length is enlarged, there are widths. The area can be narrowed. You can imagine, right? So, for example, you have this kind of uh, eraser, rubber eraser. If you compress, the length is narrowed. But the uh, total sum thickness is a little bit bigger. You can imagine, right? So this is the meaning of the Poisson, Poisson ratio. The Poisson, as you can expect, some French scientists. So, so Poisson ratio. So in the Poisson ratio, they can say that uh, it's a little bit a difficult expression, but let's try to understand. So experimentally, it is commonly found that if a test pit is loaded in tension or compression and in directional perpendicular to the load axis, lateral strain will appear. So which means that when they force apply here or here, so, so perpendicular direction also something changed about the strain. This is called lateral strain. And then uh, if the load is tensile on expansion, it, uh, a contraction if the load is tensile. Tensile, tensile, contraction. A little bit of uh, width is enlarged, but which is called contraction. And then expansion, if the compression like this, and then this original value is enlarged like this, okay? And this is known as a Poisson strain. So in this Poisson strain, the important thing is that within the uh, elastic limit, the Poisson ratio is constant. Maybe you that you don't know about the elastic limit, but in simply we can say that elastic limit that if you make if you induce the force in certain limit, and then if you remove the force when they recover fully, which is called elastic. But for example, this is some um, uh, a rubber remove rubber eraser like this you compressed, and then this force is removed. But their original structure is recovered totally, which is called elastic. So elastic limit is that how much you can apply the force until they deform permanently. This is elastic limit. So uh, Poisson ratio is always constant within the elastic limit, which means that over the elastic limit, the Poisson ra ratio is different. So. Uh, this Poisson ratio is very important because this is used for uh, finite element analysis. Maybe you already know this kind of some images because uh, from the point of the architecture or from the point of the mechan mechanistics, they always using this Poisson ratio of certain metal or ceramic or polymer to estimate how much they, in they endure during their breaking down. So for example, if this car is attacked to the wall, uh, how much of force was applied to the person? For calculating this kind of uh, strength, they always use this Poisson ratio of, of all of this material. Okay, so this is very important. And then you can see this uh, original ceramic Poisson ratio is point two. What is the meaning? When you change the length 10 millimeter, the width can change two millimeter, okay? So for example, this is some well certain ceramic. If you make the force 
and then you can change 10, 10 millimeter of the length. So as a unit, you can think about. So let's imagine this is 100 millimeter height. Okay. And then you change their their length to 110. Okay, and then our Poisson ratio of the ceramic is 0.2, for example. Sorry, and then you can expect you can expect how much of this uh, lateral strain is changed. So at this moment we don't know. Let's say this is some um, uh, five millimeter of original things, and then. What can be the finer width of this one? Okay. So this change amount is 10 millimeter. Okay. And then y cross is 0.2, so we can expect uh, multiply 0.2, and then we can expect 2 millimeter can change. Okay. So this is a 5. So 2 millimeter can change. So why the total? 3. Okay? Because 5 minus 2 is 3. Okay? So if I give you original length or original width and then and final length and the Poisson ratio, you can calculate what is the final uh, width of your material. Okay? Raise your hand if you can understand. Okay, so perfect. <laughs> so anyhow, so let's say this is some ceramic is all, all, always 0.2 and then stainless steel, some kind of metal, 0.3, and then enamel, dentin, compact bone, and gold, trabecular bone, and rubber, they all like this. But you can simply imagine what happened when the Poisson ratio is different. Can you imagine? So maybe you feel that maybe our material can when can when they can have similar Poisson ratio for between your applied tissue they can be good you can say simply say like that right for example this is the bone but well, you want to apply certain scaffold to the bone and then what is the bone's Poisson ratio let's say compact bone is 0.3 let's imagine. Okay, but your material has Poisson ratio has 0.5, and then let's imagine when your material is inside of the bone, and then if you use this bone to bend or to lift up certain material and lift up certain weight, what happened? When the force is applied, the bone they can change in certain range, right? But your material can change more larger if the Poisson ratio is 0.5 over the 0.3 and then your material can break down your bone inside of your body okay so this is so that is why we always think about the Poisson ratio should be similar if you want to apply your material to your body okay so that is why for dental or for your bone many people use this stainless steel or titanium, almost similar 0.3, because this 0.3 is similar to the bone, okay, cortical bone. And then how about gold? Yeah, a little bit similar, but a little bit larger. But the territories of gold, they can a little bit flexible than metal. You know, metal, as you know, the 100% gold, you can easily change your shape. So sometimes you can use the gold as a biomaterial for bone tissue replacement okay and then okay this is the meaning of the Poisson ratio so Poisson ratio why is it important they can be used for fine element analysis which is called FEA and then if you think about uh, which kind of material you want to apply for certain tissue the Poisson ratio should be matched okay
Okay, and then now we have to learn about the what is the stress strain curve. Okay, this is called strain and stress curve. Okay, and then let's say you can load the load cell. Load cell they can only change their movement, right? They can go up or go down. Okay, now this is a specimen in the center. So let's say we want to go up to the load cell to induce compression force? No, tension force. Because this grip can grip the specimen and then when you go up to the, this load cell, this specimen that can be enlarged, right? So this is called tension force. Okay? In tension force, uh, we always have to make this kind of a specimen a little bit narrow in the center. Why? Because let's say the specimen they have some same widths. We cannot expect where they can start to break up. Okay? But if you make this kind of dog shape, which is which we call dog shape, dog shape manner, always the breakdown can start from here. So when we measure this area, we can easily know how much they resist. Okay? But for example, if you make this specimen just parallelly, but, be, uh, but and then due to the defect, small defect of this specimen, we cannot expect how, when, and where they break up. And then we cannot say we exactly want to measure the strength of this material, not the defect. But sometimes the material is not perfect; they always have defect. So sometimes because of defect in here, they can break down. In that case, we cannot say that the value from this defect is not the representative value of this total material. So that is why, for example, uh, you can imagine, let's say your defect is here, 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 okay? But after making this dog shape like this, there is no defect here, okay? So we can perfectly measure the strength of this material because they are going to break down here. But if you make this not dog shape just parallelly, when there is a defect here, always the breaks down like this and this or this, and then this is not the exact measurement of the material because always the material should break down from here or here or here. But we want to measure the here from where, where which has doesn't have any defect. Okay, so th this is the why we want to make this kind of very dog shaped tree, dog shaped specimen for measuring certain material. But sometimes it's not easy. For example, if you uh, have some your membrane or a certain paper, not easy to make this kind of dog shape. But in that case, we don't have any choice. Just measure several times as much as possible. And then if your value is go down or outlier, you just remove it because this value is not from the material itself, from the defect. So there's why for mechanical property, always the end number should be larger than 10 most of the time, minimum five, okay? So this is the why we make this kind of specimen like this. And then, uh, okay, now we think about this is, this is the initial element, how they organize, okay? But when you induce the force under elastic limit, you can see the, their contact is not changed, but a little bit shift. Okay? They a little bit shift, but anytime when you remove your force, force they can go back. So this is how they uh, demonstrate like this. This, they contact in here, but they contact a little bit change it, but they, this cannot go like this. But when you think about the plastic deformation, the plastic means that there is a permanent change. So what is the permanent change? This element, their change, position, permanently. So that's why they cannot go back. This is called plastic deformation. Okay, so you have to think about what is the real meaning of the plastic and elastic. For example, 
your material has 10 millimeter length okay and then you compress 8 millimeter okay so this 8 millimeter change is within the elastic limit when you remove your force they can go back 10 millimeter okay but for example your 10 millimeter uh, rubber eraser we compress down to 5 millimeter and then this is the over the elastic limit which means that they should some they should some plastic plastic deformation permanent change and then what will happen the 5 millimeter if we remove our force so 5 millimeter they maintain total, totally no this 5 millimeter they can change to 9 millimeter okay but we can say they induce plastic deformation of 1 millimeter okay so people are uh, easily misunderstood this meaning so when they say that plastic deformation they never many and which is not meaning they just maintain their structure this 5 millimeter okay when they remove their force anyhow they want to go back to normal but certain lengths they cannot go 100 percent so this one millimeter of plastic deformation can occur okay so from this meaning we can easily expect that from this graph so this is graph and then we can say that when they show some uh, linear slope we can say that until this linear slope which is called under elastic limit but when this uh, graph is changed like curve which can say that they can start to show plastic deformation uh, so from this stress strain curve we can expect oh this is some elastic limit so for example this graph maybe 0 0.01 is the elastic limit what is the meaning if your material has 100 millimeter when you change one millimeter which is the elastic limit but when you change over one millimeter they start to show plastic deformation so when you remove your force they cannot go back 100 percent little bit they cannot a little bit they cannot go back okay and then uh, this is the meaning of the yeah, i will show you later so anyhow for this graph we can know the young's modulus which is called another elastic modulus okay this is called another another term stiffness so this slope is the meaning of the stiffness okay how you calculate the stiffness stress the unit megapascal can be divided by strain which has no value so also stiffness the value is megapascal okay and the word in yield strength yield strength is a theoretical strength which can start to show plastic deformation okay so we can uh, assume that this yield strength can be obtained from this linear slope so when this slope and then when they start to show not linear and then we can say this is the yield strength yield means forgive now your material forgive and then they start to show some plastic deformation okay and what are the ultimate strengths ultimate strength is the maximum power how they resist okay if you apply the force over the ultimate strength the material is break down okay and the wide elongation elongation is the strain at failure failure means that totally breakdown so over the ultimate strength the material anyhow they can resist but their total structure is uh, destroyed ongoing destroyed and then finally when they are destroyed this is the meaning of the failure so for example if we want to uh, break down the glass uh, you try to hard to break it but first they start to show some uh, grain right and then which is called ultimate strength but uh, you have 
you force apply the force several times and then finally the glass is totally break down which is called strain and failure okay so a little bit different the ultimate strength and strain failure after, so you have to remember that after ultimate strength the material can resist some more yeah so this is the thing you have to memory hold things a little bit complicated and less try to understand one by one. The strain, we can say that original length and then how they change it. So we can say delta length. Delta length means that the moment, the, how much they change, okay? And then strain, as you say, we have no value here. And stress is megapascal. So let's say you can update this graph. And then we can say that this is some slope. Okay, linear slope. So we can say the elastic behavior. And then from the elastic behavior, we can know elastic modulus, another term, stiffness, another term, Young's modulus. All of the same meaning. Okay, and then we can say proportional limit, which means that the end point of this linear slope. Okay, and then uh, elastic limit. Elastic limit is really theoretical limit. So, uh, and the yield point is we can calculate. So, what is yield point? We, so normally, people do like that. You can know this slope, and then this is some x axis movement of this slope, and then you can determine this C point. Okay, so this is uh, this C point meaning yield point at 1% offset. Okay, offset meaning that uh, x axis movement. Maybe you can know in middle school you did this kind of things. Okay? So, anyhow, you have a slope, 1% x axis movement, and then you can calculate the C point. It's yield point. Why we use C and A, not P? Actually, the real, real thing we want to know is the P point. P point means that uh, practically you apply the force here and then if you remove this force, this material they can go back 100%. This is the meaning of the left limit. But uh, technically we cannot measure it. We cannot measure it because every time we have to do A, A we can know from this stress strain curve but because the end point of the linear slope and C, we can calculate from the A slope. But for getting the P, you have to do from the A, 0.1 more strain, 0.1 more strain, a 0.2 more strain, 0.3 more strain. Step by step, you have to do, and then you remove the apply, you remove the force, and then measure their length, whether the length is originally come back or not. You have to measure maybe 100 or 1,000 times to get this P point. So it's non-practical way to measure this P point. So that is why when you gather some material from the company, they always provide A and C. And then you can know P point is middle of the A and C. Okay. So as a, a preservative, preservative manner, under the A limit, we can expect this material can go back to normal if you remove your force. But when your force is around yield point, maybe some part they cannot go back. Okay? This is the meaning of the elastic limit. And then uh, and then after this elastic limit, they can start to show plastic behavior. Plastic behavior means that when we remove your force, they cannot go back to normal. Certain little plastic deformation you can detect. D is the what? Ultimate strength. How, how much they resist permanently. And then E point, fracture point. They now fractured. Okay? So if we apply this specimen and then tangent strength, we can say that this D point is ultimate tangent strength. Okay? But if you compress this specimen, we can say ultimate 
compression strength. Okay, depending on your mold. So let's say if you have some bonding or shear mold, we can say ultimate bonding strength or ultimate shear strength. Ultimate means maximum. So ultimate can be replaced as a maximum. We can also say that maximum tensile strength, maximum compression strength. Okay. And then you can say that or sometimes you have to put some this total strain at failure. So how large they maintain their strength until they fracture. So for example, if you have your hydrogel, your membrane, your scaffold, you can do this kind of simple mechanical property test and then you can get a lot of a lot of parameters. Stiffness, proportional limit, yield limit, ultimate strength, fracture point, and fracture, strain and fracture. Okay? You can get many things from the one experiment. So this is the very basic concept of your core material point. So yeah, in Korean you can say strain as a yul and then original length and then how they change. Okay. And then you can also think about the area. Okay. So you can see that this stress strain curve we can always say SS curve. So from now on, if we say SS curve, which means that strain and stress curve, okay? So what is the meaning of these things? This meaning is that until last limit, the area of this, okay? So which is called resilience. Resilience means that how much they can uptake the energy before they induce some plastic deformation. Okay? So how you calculate this area? You can do <laughs> some integrity, okay? And yeah, you can uh, measure this area, okay? But as you know, the strain value doesn't have any unit, right? So also this resil resilience, the value is also mega pascal. Okay, but the meaning is that until uh, before they start to show plus deformation, how much of energy they uptake, which is called resilience. So if you make some kind of very lower material, and then you can measure this resilience as well. So as you can see, compared to one, compared to one, two is more higher resilience. You can say that. Okay which means that they uptake more energy before they start to show plastic deformation. And then what is this one? This is the, uh, until failure, you can also calculate this area. Okay, this is called toughness. You can say that this guy is tough. What is the meaning? A little bit tough, but actually this tough is toughness is almost similar, I feel like. Toughness is that how much they endure before they fracture, okay? So compared to this, this material have more toughness. So when they have more toughness, we can say that uh, this is some ductile. But when this toughness, total area until breakdown, this area is when they small, we can say that brittle, okay? So the meaning of the brittle is mostly we can say from the hard material. So what is the hard and soft material? Soft and hard from the stiffness we can say. This is a soft material, this is a hard material. Okay? Also, this is a soft, this is a hard material. From the hard material, when they have a limited area, we can say this is brittle. So as a conceptually, we can say that glass is brittle material because it's not easy to break it. But once they break, they easily break down. This is so brittle. So what is the brittle material of your body? Mm, maybe cortical bone. Cortical bone is brittle. But trabecular bone is not brittle. Okay? And your tooth, brittle. 
Okay. So when they are brittle, the the fracture phenotype is they their fracture area is very sharp. This is the uh, phenotype of the brittle material. Okay. In the while the soft, just think about some eraser, rubber eraser, yeah, and skin, and your muscle. This is soft. Okay. So you can so anyhow. When we, when I show you what is the meaning of this one, toughness, this one, resilience, what is the unit, megapascal, and then what happened, what we call when they have hard or high stiffness, and then low toughness, how we call it, you can call it as brittle material. So what if they have soft and lower stiffness, and then a higher area of this toughness, we can call it ductile. Okay, so in case of AMA, the so Professor Kim or me want to make some uh, highly, how can I say? What is the thing? So we want to show you. Uh, uh, is yeah, yeah, high. Super tough. Super tough. This is the meaning of super tough. So super tough meaning that when they have a uh, high, much super area of this one. This is called super tough. Okay, so if you do straight stress curve, and then your material has a lot of this area, which can call super tough. For so for super tough, maybe the failure, a strain and failure should be go like this. Okay, and then also when their maximum strength is higher, oh, this can be super tough. Okay, so if we make some support material, which is good for for biomaterial, because they can maintain their structure from the huge amount of the energy. Okay, so for example, when you your material have little toughness, they easily break down. Right? It's not easy to apply this material to your body. So if you make some support material, this can be applied in the bone or your muscle or other kind of tissue easily. And then in that case, also you have to think about what is that? Their stiffness and then their Poisson ratio. Okay? So for example, if you make some one material, you have to now you have to think about straight point, their toughness, their slope, their elastic modulus, their Poisson ratio. They should be matched to your tissue of interest. Ah, also, a toughness, uh, uh, more toughness, better. Yeah, always. Not always, sometimes, so most of the time. So, this is some value of the, your strength, stress, right? And then, how can you change the energy? Because this area, I, I tell you, this is some kind of energy. So, uh, mega possible multiply value. And then you can add a uh, meter to bottom and up. So this can be converted to the joule per meter cube. Okay? So this is some, so in one unit of the volume, how much of energy are applied? You can convert it like this. Okay? So from this area, we can say that, oh, as energy, oh, one. 111 cubic, how much of energy can be applied? And then, how much your material can resist? Okay, you can easily convert. So, as a resilience, as I told you, uh, energy with an elastic limit. Okay, so sometimes, as, as I can say you, elastic limit, we cannot theoretically measure it. So, we can, most of the time, we can use Proportional limit or yield limit. Okay, here, this proportional limit or yield limit, we can use it for measuring the resilience. But theoretically, elastic limit, energy with an elastic limit. But technically, we can measure this value from the proportional limit or yield limit. And the toughness, energy on tip fracture. Okay. 
So, yeah. We, we have two material, okay? And then one material, they show like this, and two mat B material, they show like this. We can say that, oh, A and B, they have very similar, what? Ultimate strength. See, ultimate strength. But which one is different? Slope is different. So A and B material, they have different elastic modulus. Different Young's modulus, different slope. So how can you calculate this slope? As I told you, this strain value doesn't have any unit, but only uh, axis, you know, y axis, megapascal, they have a unit. Okay? So we can calculate like this megapascal divided by value, but almost the same megapascal. But as you can see, the strain is very lower. That one, maybe almost their value is below the point one. So this megapascal, the value can be higher. So we can normally use gigapascal. Okay. So for example, this A material, point zero two strain, and then six hundred megapascal. Right. So we can say. 30,000 megapascal, but this is too large. So we just easily say 30 gigapascal. Okay? And then this B, 15 gigapascal. So what is the stiffness of the, our tissue culture plate? 2 gigapascal, which means that 2,000 megapascal. And then what is the stiffness of the brain? 1 kilopascal. Okay? So one kilopascal is the 1,000 times less than one megapascal. So, I'm oh, sorry. So this is very important. So let's say we have brain, muscle, bone, and TCP. Okay. This is bone is one kilopascal. Muscle is ten. Let's say bone is around fifty to one hundred kilopascal, right? Why is the TCP tissue culture plate? Maybe two gigapascal. Okay. 2 gigapascal is how much different this original our tissue? Maybe 10,000 times more higher. And then we can say that how the TCP can mimic our bio, bio tissue? It's almost impossible. Okay, this is the concept how the biomaterial scientists want to develop some kind of soft culture plate for culturing this brain, muscle, or bone tissue, okay? But at the moment, there is no commercially available soft culture plate. So if you can make soft culture plate, you can be a rich person, okay? Okay, so as I told you before, you have these two material. We induce some tangential force to this material, and then one material, their breaking motion is like this, the other material like this. And then from these two fractured status, you can simply assume what can be related to number one, what can be related to number two. Nayeon, this is related to number one, number two. Number one. So number one is a uh, higher slope, right? Higher slope is that very stiff. In case of stiff material, they tend to be, they tend to have very brittle. So their fracture line very sharp. Okay. 
But in case when their stiffness is lower, which means that they are deformed somehow, so their breaking point like this. So for example, you have your material, you just break it. But when you look at the breaking side, the fracture line is very sharp, which means that, oh, it can be very brittle material, and it can have very more stiffness. But when you break it, the breaking side is like a little bit not sharp, and then we can assume that, oh, this material is, has some lower stiffness. Okay, you can just assume. Definitely, you have to do this kind of stress strain curve things, but before that, you can simply check your finger. So, yeah, this is a little bit complicated, but for your understand understanding, you can see that uh, we can say why is it stiff and flexible from the elastic modulus? Why is it strong and weak from the ultimate strength? Okay? Why is it ductile and brittle from the total energy, the area of the SS curve? Ductile means more larger area, pretty means more lower area. And the bar is tough. Among the stiff material, when they have more uh, larger uh, area, we can say this tough material. And then among the flexible, lower stiffness material, when they have larger area until last limit, we can say it's a resilient material. So let's say uh, from the Ultimate strength, we can say this is, uh, let's first start from the stiffness. Stiff, okay, stiff, stiff, stiff. Slope is lower than stiff, right? So that's why we can say flexible, 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 flexible. Or we can say another, a little bit soft. We can say that. Then ductile, ductile means larger area. We can say this is more ductile. And this is brittle. But actually, when you say brittle and ductile, this is not absolute meaning. When you have another material and they have less area of this number two, we can say another number, another material is more brittle than number two. This, this is not absolute value. This is some relative things. So this material Brittle material is compared to this number one, it's more brittle. Okay. And then, uh, this is some also large area, ductile, small area, brittle. Okay. But strong from the ultimate strength. Strong, strong, weak, weak, lower value of length. And then, tough, how can you say? Among the stiff material, when they have high area, larger area, we can say this is tough. Let's say uh, among the flexible, this is also ductile because at the fracture, they have a large area, but this is more brittle than number five. Okay? Also, this ductile is, compared to six, this is more ductile, more large area, and then this is brittle, compared to six, seven. And then we can say that this A is more brittle than number six, okay? And then what is strong from the X, uh, ultimate strength? Strong, strong, weak, weak. And then resilient, we can say this five and six both are resilient. Why? They have, from the elastic limit, they have same area. So we can say this five and six, they have two of them, they have higher resilience. Okay, we can say that resilient material. Mm. This is a little, little bit complicated, but over time you try to understand this meaning. So I will show you like this. How can you describe this SS curve? We can say from the higher strength, strong, weak. Okay, stiffness, how much? So we can say stiff and flexible or soft. And then their area quite large. So we can say this ductile area is quite small. And this is brittle. And then what else we have to say that from the stiff material, this have more 
area. So we can say this top motor here. But in here, this flexible, this area is not that much higher. So we can send that we cannot say this is a resilient material. Okay. Okay, so from now on we understand this. Oh. Okay, so we are almost ending of this first study. So yeah, like I said before, let's think about our hydrogen. So, in this science paper, 2006, uh, this uh, angular, they measure their stiffness of the blood, brain, muscle, and bone. Okay? How they measure? Actually, they measure using another methodology, AFM. Also, we can measure this stiffness using our instrument, universe testing machine. So, in the testing machine, they measure the stiffness using the slope of SS curve. So, 1, 10, 1 decal Pascal. And then they mimic this stiffness using polyacrylamide gel. And then when they make polyacrylamide gel, they also measure their stiffness using SS curve. Okay? And then they make around 1, 10, and 40 kilopascal hydrogel. And then they measure their stiffness. And when they confirm it, they culture the stem cell, MSC, and they look at their morphology. And they check this lower stiffness have a neural-like structure under normal pulse media. But in case when the MSC, they are culturing on the high stiffness, like bone, they are spreading out. This is a phenotype of the bone. Okay? So when you have some, when you can make some your hydrogel, you can measure their stiffness. Okay? Using our strength strain curve. Stress strain curve. And then, in here, you want to encapsulate yourself in hydrogel, okay? And then they said, in the metal muscle, this hydrogel or modulus, elastic modulus is another term of the elastic, elastic stiffness. Or, okay, this is elastic modulus, is a stiffness. So hydrogel was measured by parallel plate compression testing at 10% length strain mean as previously reported. So this parallel plate compression testing machine is another machine of the instrument. Yeah. Also, you can measure the stiffness of this hydrogel using almost similar instrument machine. Okay? So, they measure their hydrogel for a 12, 50, or 100 kilopascal hydrogel. They make it, and then they measure so their slope from the our strength SS curve. And then they calculate this stiffness. And then they culture the MSC inside of the hydrogel and then under mixed media of autogenic adipogenic. And in here they found that in this uh, chemically bonding hydrogel, the stem cell cannot spread out. So all of the cell they can go adipogenic. Okay, so this is a little bit different from this one. This is some 2D culture of stem cell, but this is 3D. In 3D, even though this same stem cell culture on higher stiffness, they never go osteogenic because they cannot spread out from the chemical bonding of this hydrogen. So that's why in this paper, you can look at it, this paper, when they induce rock 3 which is some um, chemical signaling for sp spreading out from inducing some traction force, they can start to osteogenic differentiation. So, yeah, this is some um, uh, interest point of this hydrogel. So anyhow, I want to highlight your hydrogel can be measured by the our stress strain curve to measure the stiffness. Okay. And then from the st stiffness is not the all parameter we can measure from the hydrogen. So what else we can say? This is the meaning of the stress relaxation. So this is the methodology. You can say initial elastic moduli, modulus moduli, same thing. 
and stress relaxation property of INS gel were measured from compression test of the gel disc. 15 mm in diameter, 2 mm thickness, and incubated in DNA for 24 hours. So the gel disc was compressed to 15 strain. So I can make an exam. So their thickness is 2 mm, and then compression to 15 strain. And what is the final length, thickness of this hydrogel at 15 strain? Can you calculate? You should calculate, okay? Maybe uh, 1.3 thickness up to so the original two, but they thickness down to 1.3 millimeter, which is the 15 strain at compression, and the with deformation rate of 1 millimeter per minute. This is very important. When you write down, when you do some mechanical property test, this rate of the instrument loads that is very important because depending on this rate, your measurement strength can change. So simply, when you uh, check some mechanical strength of a certain rubber material, when you fast, you stretch out, your obtained value can be larger. But when you slow, slow or stretch out, the value is very smaller. So that is why people of the mechanical guy, you always mention about this rate of the compression or tension. This is the meaning. Our instrument machine, they have a load cell, and then the instrument machine, they can move. Okay? So this rate is uh, how, they, how speed they move. 1 millimeter per minute, or 10 millimeter per minute. Depending on this rate, you can get a very different value. Okay? So for example, as a tip, you want to highlight your material. I want to say our material have very higher stiffness and higher strength, and then you can make this rate higher, and then you can get higher value. I use an instrument machine and columnar apparatus. Columnar apparatus is some, some flat apparatus, and then within 15 compression, after this 2 mm thickness can be 1.7 mm, the stress versus strain ratio, ratio of the gel are almost linear, and slope of the stress strain curve keeps in modulus. So strain strain relation are almost linear. What is the meaning? Their behavior is quite elastic. And then the stage Y, the slope of the strain strain curve, 5 to 10 percent of the strain is obtained for getting the elastic modulus. Subsequently, the strain was held constant and then while the load was recorded as a function of time. So I'll give you back. It's almost, okay. So here we can say that this is very linear, and then from this linear thing, when you measure slope from here or from here or from here, you can have same so stiffness. But this is a very theoretical thing. We, when we measure, we cannot take like this. So in that case, you have to determine where, which slope you have to obtain the initial stiffness. Here, here, or here. So that is why they mention like this. So they show very linear slope. And from linear slope, they determine this 5 to 10% of the strain, they can measure the slope. And this is the meaning of stiffness of this material. But it's depending on your researcher. If you want to get the slope from the initial part, you can, you can do it. The later part, you can do it. So it's up to you. But just mention in material method. And then, uh, this is a, after this uh, two millimeter thickness, can be decreased to 1.7, and then at 15% compression strain, you stop the machine. And at that time, you measure their strength over time, like this. So this is a normalized, normalized means that they just 
this can be 10 megapascal or 1 megapascal. And then over time, your covalent cross-linking, chemical cross-linking hydrogel, they never change their strength. Okay, but your original tissue, adipose liver brain, or fracture hematoma, or bone marrow, or collagen gel, their strength relaxed, go down. Which means that, for example, if you have some rubber eraser, you compressed. But when you measure this, how they resist your finger, they maintain forever. But your soft, your skin, when you push it, or your skin are reorganized inside of the structure, and then their stress is relieved. So this is some basic property of your tissue. So from this mechanical property, we can say that our material also can have this kind of similar things. Okay? Because previously, this material, the uh, physical, uh, chemical cross-linking material, they show this behavior. So the cell cannot spread out, and the cell cannot go oxygenic differentiation. But after making your gel like this, the cell can spread out, the cell can induce traction force, and the cell can differentiate into certain parts. Okay? That is why in this paper, they make arginate gel using different molecular weight, and then they vary stress relaxation behavior. And then how can we say that? Stress relaxation. So they measure this half of tau, meaning when the original stress, regardless of the initial value, maybe high, middle, low, in here, they using the same elastic modulus, but when you measure it, maybe they can have different elastic modulus. It's okay. Anyhow, you normalize it. And then, when this normalized original value at 15% compression, when they go down the 0.5, half, and you can measure the time. time. How long? how fast this original, original strength can be half. And then you can calculate this time and then convert it to half of tau. So for example, this low molecular weight PEG, less than, let's say this 90, cent, 90, cent, 90 second, so this is quite similar to 90 seconds. Okay? So from this half of tau, you can say quantify how much of the stress relaxation you have for your material. Okay? So like this. You can like this and then this is the point of the half of top for low low molecular weight and this is for low molecular weight without PG. This is some middle molecular weight and high molecular weight high molecular weight like maybe this one. Okay? So from this one, they can make three, four different six relaxation hydrogel, but same stiffness, okay? And then oh, one to seven day stiffness never change, and then they dry mass, they never degrade. So from this material, they want to check the effect of the stress relaxation for some MSC differentiation. If you have some interest, you can report this paper. Okay, so from this methodology, yeah, in our eye train, we also make this kind of collagen sick hydrogel. Okay, this is the last page of this to today's lecture. So collagen, oh, this is collagen and silk and human MSC. So we want to mix them together for culturing. And then we make these three different hydrogel, hard, intermediate, Okay, this is some soft intermediate heart. Okay, so from the SS curve, okay, SS curve, we can measure 
you can simply say this is soft and intermittent hard. And then we can measure the stiffness and calculate it. So, seven hard. So, like two, five, around seven to Pascal. Okay? And then, at the same time, your machine in the software, we can change this x axis to strain to time easily. Okay? So, just you measure one time point, one specimen, and then you can gather stiffness and stabilization together. So try to do at the same time, that's better. And then, when, when this machine can stop at this 15% compression, and then the machine can stop, but simultaneously they can measure their force from the hydrogen over time, like this. And then, from this hard intermediate soft, this initial value, let's say 900 Pascal, when they go down to 450, how much time it will take. So for hard material, like 30 seconds. This intermediate material, around 40 seconds. Soft material, from 200 to 100, around 30. Yeah, 30, yeah. Maybe this is a result of G1. Maybe we have to check one more time. So anyhow, uh, we can say that maybe these three hydrogel have very fast just relaxation. Even though they can show a little bit difference, but compared to this, let's say this normal tissue, how about they are half of tau, which is around 100. Okay, this is log scale, 10, 100, 1000. 100 is very good. Collagen is around 10 seconds. But our hydrogel is less than 50 seconds. So we can say that our hydrogel have very fast just relaxation, which means that biomimetic mechanical property, okay? So, depending on our last modulus, yeah, we can do some methodology. So maybe our hypothesis that even though um, maybe they have similar set relaxation, but we can only vary their stiffness, and then from this stiffness, maybe they can show different MSC behavior. And different MSC behavior can show different differentiation factor, or a paracaline factor, or other things, they can be varied. Okay. Okay, this is the um, yeah, end point of this today's lecture. Thank you. <laughs> so, any question? Okay, if you have any question, just let me know. Okay, see you next week. So, this week we don't have biology class, so just uh, for three, three weeks we only have uh, this material class. Okay, so every Tuesday, 7 a.m.